got the crane built, um, we can actually start getting into the job that um, I really need to get into today, and it's generators. So behind me down here, we've got a little um, Kubota generator. It's a three-cylinder D722 generator, um, 14 kVA Fisher Panda thing. Um, it's in pieces, and we need to rebuild it. So that's today's job, is to figure out what we're missing so that we can start getting this thing back together. And Dame literally found this in a bush at the marina. Tim came up for the weekend and put together a bunk in the spare cabin at the front of Brewpeg. And Tim has set up on the rear deck um, basically a bit of a wood workshop. So he's got all the slats cut out. He's going to be recessing those so that they sit into the, um, into the beams on either side. Um, he's got his saw benches and a couple of different types of saws out here that he's using. So a um, bit of a... We come up the stairs here in clouds of sawdust whenever he's cutting anything. So um, yeah, you know when he's working. Right, so this is what we're working with. So this is our alternator, the 14 kVA alternator. And I think these are like 18 horsepower or something, little three cylinder Yanma. So it's got a water cooled exhaust manifold. Um, we're not sure if we're gonna do a wet exhaust, we'll probably do a dry exhaust. But you can see there's like rust all over the steel mounts. If I come right down in there, it might be a bit hard to see on the camera, but there's basically rust all over the steel mounts. On the front there, you can sort of see that. Um, this, let me show you this bit. So on this side here, that little mount there is where the seawater pump used to mount onto. And you can see it's basically everything below it is covered in like rust and crap. So that pump's obviously been pissing seawater for a while. Um, we don't need a seawater pump because we're, we're um, freshwater keel cooled, so it works out good for us. Um, and the other thing is there is oil everywhere on the front of this engine. Um, so we need to uh, basically strip down and figure out where that oil is coming from. Pretty sure it's a front crank seal. Um, and then we'll uh, replace whatever seal has died. Um, yeah, just so that we don't have to deal with this going through the engine bay on, on Brewpeg. So we had to basically strip all of the parts off that either needed to be sandblasted, like these rusty steel mounts, or uh, the electrics, anything that couldn't basically get wet uh, or needed additional work on it. We're gonna start getting into the water blasting on this. So it was really important to make sure that we don't cause ourselves any damage for any, any parts that needed to be protected. Um, the steel engine mounts we're going to reuse, there's nothing wrong with them, they're just a bit rusty, so we'll blast them back to be a white metal and then we'll start priming and painting those. So when we were stripping the engine down, I saw this. There's a heap of real bash marks and all sorts of mess on the dipstick, so something's going on, I don't quite know what has caused that. I need to basically rip the bottom of the motor apart when we get to that point so that we can figure out if there's damage inside. The motor still spins over so it's not seized or anything and it's still got compression. I can feel three you know clear compression cycles happening on the piston so um, I'm happy enough with that. I just don't understand why the uh, dipstick's got all of that damage so far. These are the casings that it sits in um, so they've got a lot of soundproofing in them. Um, we need to basically strip these out and clean them. They're pretty disgusting as it had a leaking um, front main crank seal so we need to replace that. Um, stripping it all down we were able to get the generator into pieces. Um, everything looks pretty good, there's not too much damage inside, I can't see any sort of water egress or anything like that um, so I'm pretty happy with sort of the overall condition. I'm sure we can basically get something to work here. Um, the bearing seems fine, there's no no real, um, yeah, nothing, no red flags, no drama or anything inside here. On the inside of the housing, you can see all these copper windings. Um, this is basically how a generator creates the alternating current when it spins uh, from the engine. So each of these little magnets in here is a north-south, north-south pole, so all the way around and, and as the, um, the inner part of the generator spins, it basically creates a current um, through these big copper windings. Um, this is a water-cooled housing, um, so we'll be basically pumping cold seawater through this to keep it cold because it generates a lot of heat. Um, and you can sort of see right here, the guy, when he stripped it down, um, cut the wires super close to the housing, so we have to probably pull these copper windings out so that we can join um, new high-temp silicone wire onto, um, onto those copper windings. And to do that, we need to flip it over and basically go through and undo these bolts that sort of go all the way around the housing and lift the back end of the housing off. Um, once we've got that, we can pull the copper windings out.
So because it's a water-cooled generator, we need to basically plug up these holes and make an inlet and an outlet fitting. Um, so water will go in one and out the other, and it'll, it doesn't matter which one it is, and it'll flow around the housing. So we'll build a stainless um, square bracket, and we'll put a, a threaded fitting in each of these ports. So we needed to start sandblasting our housings and we were running low on sand garnet so we employed our Rolling Thunder sand sieve again um, and Ed gave us a hand to sieve some of our silica free river sand so that we can use it in our blaster. Once we've done that we can then scrape out all the old gunk from the, um, the soundproofing and then get straight into our blasting and clean this housing right out. So we need to figure out what's going on with this dipstick. Um, when you look at the dipstick, there's some weird marks all over it. Something's been bashing it. Um, we don't quite know what's caused that. So the easiest way to find out is to pull the sump off the bottom of the engine, um, and then we can see what's going on in that bottom end. Um, sump's pretty easy to get off. Comes off with these 10 mil bolts all the way around. Um, and also the exhaust. We need to know how it works. So this motor used to be seawater cooled and it must get rid of the seawater somewhere. So we don't know where it's injecting that seawater into, whether it's in this aluminium manifold or if it's further down at this end of the exhaust, you know, sort of ejecting it into the rubber pipe. So we need to strip this apart and figure it out. We don't have a 10 mil socket. Um, in fact, we don't have a three, three quarter drive, a three eight drive socket set. So we had to um, pull the flywheel off and then pull the aluminium housing off so that we could get the last couple of bolts off the sump. Um, but once we had those off, we were able to pull the engine apart and figure out what's going on inside. Kicking dust in a new direction. Johnny boy, you built a house of love. A hills of Tennessee, yeah. Where hummingbirds are flying in the sky. This shiny mark that you can see here is what's causing the damage. It's what's causing that damage there on the dipstick. So when the dipstick's in its normal position, kind of a stupid design. Yeah. So now that we've figured out that there's nothing dramatic going on inside the engine, um, it's time to put it all back together. We also need to start working on our exhaust manifold. So we're building a water-cooled exhaust so we can stop the exhaust temp radiating into the soundproofing box and causing a fire. 
So this is the base on the generator. So it's a fiberglass box with, you can see sort of like a, a cross pattern there with some um, recesses sort of made into it to make it a bit stiffer. Um, we've cleaned that out. That was pretty disgusting before. We're now gonna um, put this in the engine bay and decide where we're gonna be mounting the generator because the generator actually sits inside this box and then there's a fiberglass lid that sort of goes down right over top of it to keep the whole thing quiet. started fitting all the accessories to the engine so that we can get it ready to start putting into the box. Uh, engine mounts went on and we started uh, putting the exhaust manifold back together. So we started bolting the main alternator to the diesel engine. Um, this allows us to mount it inside the fiberglass box and we can figure out where we're going to put the holes for our engine mounts. So this is going to form our water in and water out on the alternator. So this stainless plate and those two pipe fittings go on this piece of the generator here. So this is the main alternator, the generator, um, the part that actually makes all of the juice. So those um, two water jackets there, one in and one out, that's uh, basically what that stainless plate is going to cover up and we're going to be starting to pipe water around the jackets of that, um, of that main alternator on this generator. So what the plan is, we've got this um, aluminium exhaust manifold you can see at the top here and then the exhaust exits here and basically goes straight down through the box or out the side of the box. Normally this is seawater cooled so it can have a rubber exhaust, it can be flexible and it's not really that hot but we're running a dry exhaust so we have to cool it down. So what the plan is, we've got that big shiny piece of three inch uh, stainless exhaust. We're going to be mounting a, I think it's a one and a half inch piece of stainless exhaust, thick wall exhaust inside it and then Ed's got um, a piece of pipe there and that's going to be our water um, cooling system so it goes from the uh, back of the exhaust manifold and into this new water cooled housing that we're building and then you can sort of see there's a pipe at the bottom it's going out the bottom and then out the side of the the box so it's a wee bit of a modification but it should make the, the whole box a bit colder. So this is the start of our water cooled exhaust manifold so we've got the thin pipe, which is the actual exhaust pipe, and then we've got this three inch piece of pipe, the shiny stuff that goes over the outside. And that, uh, that is basically what we're gonna be building, essentially, is a pipe inside a pipe. 
So you can see that big, big flat piece that we've cut, that's sort of like a washer, that's going to be the lid when we're finished. So uh, yeah, we're going to just start test, test fitting it and then we'll tack it together, pull it out and weld it up properly. So one of the thoughts we're having is this little sensor down here is when you look at it sort of end on is really close to the exhaust. So we're just um, having some thoughts about where things are going to be mounted so they don't touch and rub and we can potentially get that sensor out later without having to dismantle half the engine. Over here, eh? I wish it'd been kinked out. Yeah. A, First kink over there, isn't it? Can it come out further this way? Studs aren't quite right, are they? Do you want to come up top? What? Do you want to come up top? Yeah. Hey, boy, babe. You're going to trip him up. That's slightly <laughs> above the lifting capacity of the winch. Is it? Yeah. Oh. Are you okay? Yeah, I just lift it while it lifts. 
Wow, well, it's pretty heavy then. Oh man, no. Open sound. See there, you can take all the close-up pictures, make sure she's got it all dialed in just right. Chain locks any louder when they originally designed them. <laughs> yeah, this loud. Yeah. Chain locks. Cover locks. No, no, it's chain locks. No, it's down. It's okay. We've been just agreeing on what things are called all day. Have you? We're just putting the, we're just putting the um, generator case into the boat. We're, about to, we're just installing it. <coughs> This is John, the guy that's doing the machining in the generator. Um, we, just, we just cleaned out all the casing and we're just installing it in and seeing where it's going to fit. I should have that soon. Tim's coming back from town soon with the measuring gear, so I should be able to get that measurement soon. So it's good product. Thanks, Johnny. I'll talk to you soon, eh? Cheers. Bye. Covers it, because if we can fit the covers, then everything else does. Well, this is good. We can knock that out there. But everything else will go. So we need to drill where the engine mounts are going to bolt through the stainless shelf that this generator sits on. So um, it's a bit of a mongrel to drill stainless, um, you need a lot of oil, we got that sorted. Um, next up for us was marking out where all the mounts are going to go and then blasting out the holes for the exhaust and the water in and out and also the electricity in and out.
to get the generator in we bolted a big beam of steel uh, hoisted the engine onto the steel and then pushed it along with some ropes Looking at that door like, what the hell are they doing? They're spraying the factory. Definitely. Okay, now you can grab that top of the rope there. Push. Yeah. Whoop. issue that we're facing is a height issue so we basically need to get the generator up into the blue box and um, you can sort of see the lifting arrangement we've got a bit of a stainless pipe um, with a uh, chain block um, but we don't have a huge amount of, of um, liftability in that chain block so what we're going to do is uh, where that chain comes down and here we're going to put a bolt and bypass the actual hook itself we're just going to bolt it directly to the engine maybe maybe down into some of these bolts down in here. Um, and that's gonna give us a lot more lifting ability and, and actual height. And then also at the top here, rather than having it roped up and then also having, you can sort of see there's a bit of a gap at the top there between the beams on the deck and the stainless pipe. We're gonna go down into here. You can see there's a rib going across onto the deck there. We're gonna bolt straight into that, put a bracket of some sort and lift directly from that, um, that rib. And then that hopefully will get us enough height to be able to put the generator exactly where we need it. Little by little, piece by piece, take back what's been stolen from me. Little by little, piece by piece, until I'm complete. I 
eyes on you And you got no clue What I'm supposed to do I can't help myself Take was not yours If you know who I am I win the night That's our generator installed. So you can see the water-cooled um, exhaust manifold that we built with the water return, um, sorry, the water um, entrance coming from the exhaust manifold down into our exhaust. And then right at the bottom, you can see the pipe exiting um, out the bottom of the fiberglass case. Um, we got a new alternator and we fitted that. And we also got a new starter motor and, oh, it's probably easier down there, new starter motor and fitted that. So what's left to do? We need to um, do the front main crank seal on this. Um, this shiny stainless pipe that goes around the back that we made, I need to hook that up. You can see there's a like a water um, inlet sort of panel that needs to be um, jazzed up. And then around on this side. So the main um, generating alternator, uh, that's got no insides in it at the moment. Um, we emptied it out um, so that we could lift it. And what we've got to do now is now that we can have the engine sitting in here, we can run all the lines and pipes and it's ready for John to start wiring this up and working on the inside of that generator. Gonna cry when you're gone. 